Thank you. Thank you, everybody. This speech was delivered by my father on February 2007 on the 70th anniversary of the Battle of Halama, there on the battlefield, where 500, the 500-strong 500 British battalion, of whom only 140 survived, the Irish International Brigade has fought as part of the British battalion. These were his words. Standing here on the battlefield of Harama, I remember comrades who sacrificed their lives and my heart is heavy with loss. I especially think of those fellow Irishmen, the poet Charles Donnelly and my great friend and teacher, Kit Conway. They were good people who came to Spain, as I did, to oppose fascism. Yes, we came to oppose, but we also shared an idea, a vision of the future. We saw fascism as a manifestation of capitalism, and we fought for a different world, a world where we could all live together in peace and brotherhood, and in harmony with our environment. A world that did not depend on the oppression and exploitation that is intrinsic to capitalism and to corporate power. Looking at the world today, we cannot afford to be sentimental. We must look at the past if we are to learn anything as realists. And I have to ask, did my comrades sacrifice their lives in vain? Some hasten to reassure me. They say, we may have lost the battle in 1939, but fascism was in the end defeated. They say, look, now we have democracy in Spain, and even a socialist government. This may be true, but what about the idea that my comrades lived and died for? Can we say that it has triumphed? In Spain, when in the last election nearly half the electorate voted for a party that is fascist in all but name? When we look at the wider world, we have seen mass murder in Latin America and Vietnam. As we speak, we see genocide in the Sudan and ethnic cleansing in Palestine. We see brutal imperialism in Iraq and Afghanistan. We see the expanding manufacture and sale of ever more powerful armaments, the use of chemical weapons, and the extension of militarization into space. We see resolutions in the United Nations seeking to abolish manufacture and the use of nuclear weapons being vetoed by the United States and Britain. We see hard-won rights like habeas corpus and trial by a jury of peers under attack. We see the introduction of ever more frightening technologies of state control and surveillance. We see the system of justice being undermined by imprisonment without trial and the use of torture. Hitler and Franco may be dead, but can we say that fascism has been defeated? Instead of uniforms, they wear suits. Instead of fancy symbols and salutes, they employ public relations firms. Instead of ranting racist and chauvinistic speeches, they use the language of Christianity and, de and democracy. But let us not fool ourselves. Fascists are alive and well, and thriving in the institutions of power. So I ask, did my comrades sacrifice their lives in vain? We stand today on the brink of an environmental catastrophe that threatens all of us. This catastrophe cannot be solved by capitalism. Capitalism is its cause. The problem was explained by Robert Tressel, an Irishman working in Britain, a house painter by trade, who wrote a book published in 1905. Robert Tressel explained the nature of capitalism with a parable of Christ-like simplicity. He said, if one day it becomes possible to bottle the atmosphere, capitalists will do it. The air will become a commodity to be bought and sold. There will be air millionaires who will have banks and vaults stuffed with bottled air. More air than they need more than they could breathe in many lifetimes. At the same time, there will be people, men, women and children, dying in the streets for lack of air. That was capitalism in 1905, and isn't this what we can see around the world today? 
People dying by lack of clean water, food and medicine. <laughs> their environment destroyed by the plundering of their natural resources, while others live in gross and extravagant luxury. The environmental crisis is another manifestation of a society built on greed, oppression and exploitation. The vision of a world where we could all live together in peace and brotherhood and in harmony with our environment seems as far away as ever. And so I ask yet again, did my comrades sacrifice their lives in vain? If you, the next generations, do nothing, then fascism will triumph. The human race will face catastrophe, and my comrades will have died in vain. It is up to you to fight for a vision of a different world. Never forget that you are fighting for an idea. While sometimes we must defend ourselves with guns, guns cannot impose an idea. The weapons of victory are education, organization, and mass civil disobedience. What I can tell you from the experience of a lifetime of struggle is the importance of unity. The unity of all who share a hatred of fascism and a desire for a better world is an essential element for a successful struggle. From Christians to dialectical materialists, liberals to anarchists, reformists to militants. If we have to move at the pace of the slowest, then be patient. Let us move slowly forward, as long as we move together. A united people cannot be defeated. And so, when I ask, did my comrades sacrifice their lives in vain? The answer is up to you today. Take up the fight and join them in the long struggle for the noblest of causes, the liberation of mankind. Then the sacrifice of my comrades will not have been in vain, but an inspiration. La lucha continua. Thank you.